We are called by God. We are united in spirit. We are bound together in peace. We are one body. We are one spirit. We are open hands. We are full hearts. We are ready. We are ready to see your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We are set free. We are mighty in the face of injustice. We are apostles. We are prophets. We are evangelists. We are disciples. We are a chosen generation. We are called to adventure. We are faithful. We are gifted. We are blessed. We are loved. We are his hands and feet. We are courageous. We are present. We have authority. We are created for great things. We are the church.
Magandang buhay everyone! And a very blessed day! What a beautiful day today! Thank you for joining with us on this Sunday service. We really appreciate you uh, continuing support in this ministry. God will surely bless you more and more as you listen to His awesome word. Amen? And greetings to all our faithful online subscribers. We are blessed to have you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let us uh, pray and um, invite the Holy Spirit as we begin this service. Father, thank you for today. Thank you, God, that you are here as you had promised. Thank you, Lord, that it is you speaking into our heart, into our mind, into our spirit. Thank you for your word today. Thank you, God, that your word is powerful that change our lives, that change our perspective in life, and change everything within us, Father God, Lord. Thank you for your healing. To live, God, that you're the great physician. You said, Lord, that by your stripe we are healed. So we thank you, Father God, Lord, that it is you, Father God, Lord, that is in the center of uh, our will in the name of Jesus. Father God, Lord, we pray for those people that are watching and standing with us Amen. in this ministry. Continue to, Lord, Lord, to reach out to them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, that you are comforting them in times of needs. Thank you, Lord, that you are meeting their needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Father God, Lord, we remember the the TJF at Kenya, Father God, Lord, we continually lift up Pastor Dennis, his wife, and all the elders, Father God, Father God, Lord, that uh, Father God, Lord, at that ministry at Kenya, Father God, Lord, that it is you, Father God, Lord, shaping the work that you had started in that uh, ministry, Father God, Lord. You said, Lord, that you that began a good work in us will be faithful to finish it. So we thank you for the great works that you're doing. Father God, Lord, even uh, in our midst, Father God, Lord, thank you. Father God, Lord, that it is you answering our prayer. We say thank you because you had answered all our prayer. Father God, Lord, thank you for the Capitan. Father God, Lord, for continually, uh, Father God, Lord, giving us, <coughs> Father God, Lord, their home, Father Amen. God, Lord. And we thank you for the new uh, home, new, new house that they are waiting, Father God, Lord. Thank you, God, that you know exactly the location where they are moving. And we thank you, Father God, Lord. You said, Lord, that in your words, that when we, as they delight themselves in you, Father God, Lord, it is you that will give them the desire of their heart. We thank you for the answer. And we give you praise. We give you praise in Jesus' name. So let us welcome the, the father and daughter. It's RJ and Yana uh, that will lead us in praise and worship. Join us and sing along with us. Amen. Hallelujah.
Amen. All my life, you've been so faithful. The faithfulness of God. Amen? Amen. So for our tithes and offering, I title this short exhortation, Love is Giving. We often hear this, you, you can love without giving. You, you can give without loving, but you certainly cannot love without giving. Love means giving. Gener generosity is an expression of love. God is the ultimate picture of generosity. As He gave His beloved Son for our salvation, giving doesn't earn you eternal life, but it is a powerful response to love God. Why give back to God? Ang tanong, why we give back to God? Because He is the one that gave us first. At Leviticus 27.30, it says, at, And all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of all your crops. It is critical to recognize that tithing was central to God's law. The Israelite didn't wait to feel inspired. To tight, it was expected. The Bible reveals what we are to tight on the increase we receive. That's the result of our protect, pro, productive effort. Many use this verse to justify that tithing doesn't apply since they are not a farmer, farmers of land or animals. Unfortunately, they miss the most critical part of this passage: to whom the tight belong. The tithe belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. This fact is crucial to understand the relevance of tithing today. The argument against the tithing complete, completely ignore the, the facts that the tithe belongs to the Lord and it is holy. So if you are not tithing, 
you're simply robbing God. I will repeat that. So if you're not tithing, you're simply robbing God. At Malachi 3, 8, 12, it read, When a man rob God, yet you have robbed me. But you say, In what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offering. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me. Even this whole nation, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be full food in my house. And try me now at this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer of your, for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruits Fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts, and all the nation will call you blessed, for you will be the delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Crucial question. Will a man rob God? That's the crucial question. Will a man rob God? Well, if you are not tithing, you are simply robbing God. It is important to understand that robbing God has a serious, serious consequences. You, la you lost your protection from the devourer of your finances. The devil will steal and rob you of your money. No matter how much you earn, you will find it's not enough. Suddenly, you receive unexpected huge bill that needs urgent payment. Then the money you don't want to give to God, the devil will snatch it out from your hand. This, in this country, if you don't pay your taxes, the HMRC will persecute you and you will eventually go to jail. Over the past 2,000 years, many different opinions have surfaced concerning biblical tithing and how to tithe correctly. But basically, as true lovers of Christ, we are aligned with these two views. We are commanded to tithe and we are commanded to be generous. We are encouraged to give freely, generously, and cheerfully to the Lord, not for material wealth or financial gain, as so many teach, but for a spiritual blessing that abound when, when God is given His rightful place in each of our lives that will eventually transform us. At Romans 12, verse 2, it reads, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Living a Christian life is more than just saying no to sin. Living a Christian life is more about living for God. When it comes to offering yourself to Christ, you are called to renew your mind. Practically speaking, you renew your mind by studying the Bible, meditating upon the scriptures, and hearing the scriptures preach. Renewing your mind is one way you can learn how to live for God. Talking about living for God, one of the big areas we are called to be faithful is with your finances. For you and me, here is the deal. When you place your faith in Christ, you will in time be transformed into a giver. We are encouraged to give our 10% of our income and believe the promise of God if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. What an awesome promise. He will empower you to be generous with what you have because loving God is giving and trusting Him. Amen? Hallelujah. So let us pray. Yes, loving God is giving and trusting Him. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that, uh, that we are able to give. Yes, Lord, loving you is giving and trusting you. We thank you, God, that you are the great provider. You said, Lord, that, Father God, Lord, that you have power to give us wealth. We thank you for all the things that you had allowed us to have, that we will never go begging for bread. We thank you, God, even for this uh, offering, Lord, that we are going to take. We thank you, Lord, that it will only be used 
for the expansion of your kingdom and for the needs of your people. Amen. We honor you and we give you praise Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So um, as you listen, I think, uh, um, Brother Dave, there is one more video and then we will hear the word of God. We welcome Pastor Romy. Let's pray for Pastor Romy. Father God, Lord, thank you for Pastor Romy. Thank you, Lord, for the word that you had give uh, into his heart. Father God, Lord, we pray that you will help him, Father God, Lord, to, uh, Father God, Lord, to proclaim your words with authority that comes from you. We thank you, Lord, that you said, Lord, when you sent forth your word, it will never go void. We thank you for your anointing upon his life. Continue to give him the desire of his heart as he continue to serve you faithfully. We glorify and magnify you in Jesus' name. Stay tuned. You will be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Welcome to our uh, online service to all the BEA YouTube people of God, you know, my family, the TJF, and to all our valued listeners all, our, all over the world. You know, welcome. And I pray and hope that, uh, you know, this truth of the Word of God, the Word of God today, will really enlighten us all and bring us nearer and, uh, and closer to the one true God. Amen? So, I entitled this message, The God of the Bible, the One True God. You know, one time when I was uh, with friends, I was surprised to know that most of them believe that uh, what they do in their faith leads to God as well. So, that means everything, they said that everything are the same. They all lead to God. They just have different ways. So, my question is, do all religion lead the same one true God? Well, as a Christian, the truth is that without knowing the Word of God, the Bible, you know, we'll, you will not be able to answer this question righteously. You know, and without uh, reading the Bible, it is impossible, it is impossible for us to know who truly God is. And as the Bible being our uh, basic instruction before leaving earth, uh, it is also our guide you know, to, to do everything righteously. And without reading it and knowing the Bible, uh, you will never know who, the one true God. What I'm trying to say basically is that you, without being a Christian and reading the Word of God, the Bible, it is so impossible to know the one true God. 2 Timothy 3.16-17 to says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. By the way, do you know what the greatest book of all time? It is the Bible. And no wonder, because it is God's book. You know? So basically, we Christians should seriously know the Bible by heart. Otherwise, we will be lost in our faith. You know, Joshua 1.8 said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. You may observe to do according to all that was written in it, for then you'll make your way prosperous, and then you will may have good success. Now, uh, Proverbs 3, 1 to 4 said, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablets of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. And as I always say, you know, if you don't know the Bible, ignorance of the law excuses no one. James 1.21 said, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word of God, which is able to save your souls. And let me share with you some basic truth and knowledge about this very precious book, the Bible. For me, there are five very important main components of it. First, repentance, forgiveness, love, obedience, and eternal life. The last being the reward of having fulfilled the first four, eternal life in heaven, you know. But personally, although all of them are important, the most crucial aspect of all of it is obedience. Because, you know, without obedience, you know, all that we do is in vain, you know. Because the total and complete obedience to God is very uh, crucial in order for us to really show our true love for God. You know, meaning God is the person's most precious treasure as we know to love Him with all our heart, mind, and soul. Matthew 6.21 said, For where treasure is, there your heart will be also. So if God is not in your heart, the main pe person in your heart, then your heart may be somebody, somewhere else. You know, to a true Christian, God is his most precious treasure. So to us, God is our most precious treasure of all. And being forgiven, he repents and mends his ways righteously. And because of that true and sincere love for God, he obeys all his instructions totally and completely with the help of his Holy Spirit himself. And I say completely because James 2.10 said, For whoever shall keep the whole law, and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. So it's either you, you obey all or not at all. You know, maybe now some of you is asking, is it possible to follow the Bible totally and completely? 
Can anyone do that? You know, all of us are sinners. Oh yeah, that's true. But not every one of us is born again. You know, can anyone do that? What do you think? If you are a Christian and you have this kind of question, then I can say that God is a bit not with you probably. Because you don't know God, you know, and you don't have these precious words in you. I believe that this question is a big stumbling block to so many Christians who don't believe completely in what God says in His words. Don't be surprised of what the Lord says, you know. Even He said in His words in Matthew 5, 48. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Whoa, you know. I bet that those unbelieving Christians out there are, you know, who are listening right now will say, are you crazy? No one can even obey the, totally and completely God's law. Then you're talking about perfection? Are you an alien? You know, you must be out of this world. Oh yeah, you're right. Because I am really not of this world, you know. I am in this world, but I'm not of this world. Just like my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who had set me apart from this world. Well, to make it clear, I am an alien to this world. That's true. Because my citizenship is in heaven. Amen? Amen. And so with all our brothers, our brethren all over the world, who truly believe and faithfully, who follows God's commandments completely, and who believe in the Bible 100%. But before letting God's words answer your doubts and questions, let me just ask you a tricky one. Do you think God will ask or command you to do something that he knew you can never fulfill? I think that's quite a fool to do, isn't it? So you, you think God is a fool to ask you to be perfect like him? You know? Another thing is that if no one can be perfect, so no one can enter heaven, isn't it? Huh? Then why are there men in heaven with God now? Like Enoch, Elijah, who were taken by God alive in heaven. Genesis 5, 24 said, And Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. God didn't kill him. He took him alive. 2 Kings 2.11 Then it happened, as it continued on and talked, that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horse of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. God took him as well alive. I personally believe Moses even, you know, is there too. Even he died in the mountain, but probably God took him with the, after that. And how? Because, you know, why? Because when the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, uh, uh, was visited by Elijah and Moses, then Moses was there, three of them. So I believe in my heart that Moses is with God as well. And how about the robber? After confessing his sins and repenting, acknowledge and believe that Jesus is king. You know what the Lord said to him? Today you will be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 43. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. So definitely that man is with him. You know? And where do you think these men are right now? Well, if you don't know, I believe in my heart again that they are with God in heaven as what the precious of God the Bible says. Now, I will let you God answer your doubts and questions of impossibility in his precious book as well. He said in Mark 10, 27, but Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. But take note, the very important word that we all Christians must understand, the words say with man it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. For you to completely understand you know, this wisdom, this simply means that you can only obey and follow God's commandments totally and completely if God is with you and you can only be perfect if God is with you so my question to you right now is is God with you because if not then you're right to say that you will never be in total and complete obedience to God thus you cannot be perfect and therefore you cannot enter heaven period so therefore without God in you you cannot do anything that will glorify him the Lord Jesus said in John 15, 4, 6, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit for itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. 
for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them, throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Only with God that we can and we be in complete and total obedience to Him, which is the very key to our eternity. Obedience denotes action, meaning we believe and we act. Our actions are results of what we believe. So we act according to what we believe. James 1, 24 said, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. James 1, 25 said, But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this one will be blessed in what he does. And as I always say, faith without work is dead. James 2.14 said, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but not have works? Can faith save him? Definitely no. No, does also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead in James 2.17. You know, James 2.26 said as well, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. The Lord Jesus said in John, John 8, 31 to 32, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believe in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So knowing the Bible is knowing the truth, knowing to the true one true God. Amen? Now, the answer to the main question, do all religions lead to the same one true God? Can either be yes or no, depending on how you understand God and faith. You know, and the existence of so many religions in the world and the claim that all religions leads to God is without question confuses many seekers of the truth of God, including Christians, which sometimes ends up resulting in the failure of knowing the absolute truth about Him. Many even end up embracing the universalist idea that all religions leads to God. And making it worse, skeptics and critics also point to the existence of so many religions as proof that either you cannot know God or that God simply does not exist. Because they believe that it is just man that created God in their minds, you know? And that is something that the devil is enjoying so much, I'm telling you. The confusion that his deception is creating in the minds of those wicked and ignorant Christians and people is the reason why people tend to believe the lie that there is no God. We just created God in our minds, that's what they say. They are saying that we are the one that created our own God. And many do this because of a number of reasons that the devil are playing around on people and among which are the following. Number one, culture and traditions. People will create religions that are commensurate in their culture and traditions. Ignorance of God's word is the very problem here. Most Roman Catholics, especially those who are folk, old folks, never read the Bible at all. They just wanted to follow what their old folks did traditionally. Matthew 15.3 said, He answered and said to them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? Matthew 15.7-9 said, Hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of man. It's our traditions. Modernity, you know, people create religions to match what they think matches with the so-called modern times. In this modern world right now, you know, what the majority decides right, even it contradicts the word of God, is the, the one that they follow, you know. What the majority says is, is right. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 12, There's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Number three is that different interpretations of the Bible. People will choose to understand the Bible the way they suit you know, their thinking. Many Christians do this and tend to disregard those commands and instructions that they think doesn't suit or contradicts their way of life. Meaning, they are compromising and lukewarm Christians who follow their own bellies and will. 
One good example is about tithing. In Genesis 14:20, Abraham tithed. Genesis 28:20-22, uh, Jacob tithed. Leviticus says, "Tithe is holy to the Lord." Malachi 3:8-10 said, "Not tithing disobedience commands is robbing God." Matthew 23:23, the Lord Jesus Christ Himself endorsed tithing. You know, and some people will seek to create religions that allow them to practice certain things of their own choice. And will. The Bible talks about these kinds of unbelievers and believers who tries to put God in a box and make God serve them instead of the other way around, that they are all without excuse, believe me, because God will judge them according to their faith and their deeds, because the Bible reveals their foolishness and wickedness. Romans 1, 8-25 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes have clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible men, and birds of four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the last of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the Creator rather than the Creator, who blessed forever. Amen. These words of God contain a biblical explanation why there are so many different religions. The truth of God is seen and known by every human being because God has made it so. And instead of accepting the truth about God and submitting to it, most human beings you know, reject it and seek their own way to understand God. And this leads not to enlightenment, but idolatry towards him. Their futility of thinking is used by the devil in his deception, creating some supernatural or magical acts in order to imprison or trap the believer in such a wrong belief or faith. A lot of ignorant Christians, especially those who don't believe the Bible or who don't read the Bible, are trapped to the devil's deception and lies about miracles, about wicked apparitions of saints, making them think and believe that these evil miracles came from God. Not at all. No way, you know. It is Satan, the devil, made this so that you, Christians, will stay in your wrong, wicked faith until you die and surely goes to hell. Because of your idolatry. And this is the reason why you have different religions. It is a deception, again, from the devil to misguide and mislead men, resulting in idolatry. And also because most people in the world are wicked and unrighteous. Many do not want to believe in a God who demands righteousness and morality. They, you know, they in wanted to invent a God who makes no such requirements. Many people do not want to believe in a God who says it is impossible for men to earn their own way to heaven. So they created their own God who accepts people into heaven if they have completely certain, you know, completed certain steps, follow their own rules, and obeyed certain laws at least to the best of their ability. And they even made their own standards of heaven, saying that imperfect and sinful people will enter the kingdom of God. No offense. I believe that most homosexual people think and believe that they will enter heaven too. Being homo, you know, I don't think so. You are mocking God who says in 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11, Do you not know that unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. You know, and you were such, some of you, and, and such were some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. They simply want their standard to be followed and not God's. Many even do not want a relationship with God 
who is sovereign and omnipotent. So imagine God as being more of a mystical force than a personal or sovereign ruler because most people don't want to be told what to do. Mm. You know, they have their own rules and they just wanted to follow what suits their desires. I don't want you to be confused. The existence of so many religions is not a question against God's existence or truth about God. Rather, it is a demonstration of humanity's rejection of the one true God. Mankind replaced him with gods and uh, with small g that are more to their liking. You know, this leads them to one deadly sin of idolatry, the desire to cre create God in our own image instead of us in the image of God comes from this very sin nature within us. This is the effect of that fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Thinking that we can be God too, or thinking that we can do better than God. The devil's wicked impossible dream implanted in the system of man. And most people in the world follows that wicked and foolish impossible dream of Satan. Now, do all religions lead to God? Actually, in one perspective, they do, if we're talking about a general term, God, small g, but because God has everything to do with faith. No, the very, very single one of us have faith, believe me, either in physical, material, or spiritual form. Even the evolutionists, the unbelievers, who believe in nothingness that created the universe, have even greater faith that we believers have. And they're denying it. Because, you know, it will take more than faith to believe that nothing can create something. That's foolishness, more than foolishness. An impossibility that only one true, super powerful God can do. And they keep on denying this truth. Others put their faith and worship on animals, on the sun, the moon, trees, stones, nature, money, useless images like the Roman Catholics too. And these modern generations where most young people idolize in a way, worship people in what they do and even their own selves. The Bible says the truth, Matthew 6, 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Our hearts dictate what and where our faith will be. And this is the very true reason why people have different religions. Because their hearts believe and worship different beings and things. Jeremiah 17, 9 said, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. But if we are talking about the one true God, then the answer to that question whether all religions lead to God is certainly no. Because only one religion leads to the one true God. And I boldly say this, and that is Christianity. And the, re the rest leads to His judgment. Only Christianity leads to His forgiveness and eternal life. The one basic truth that all should understand is that no matter what religion one embraces, everyone will meet God after death either resurrection to eternal life or resurrection to hell. Hebrews 9, 2 said, As it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. I honestly and strongly believe that all religions lead to a God, but I have no doubts in, in my heart and mind that only one religion leads to the one true God and His acceptance, and that is Christianity. Because it is the only religion that preaches and teaches the unconditional love of God that was given to man, and having the total and complete salvation through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, His beloved Son, who died for the sins of the world to be forgiven. And because Christianity believes, you know, that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, and He is God's Son in the Trinity, among, you know, and anyone can approach Him with confidence, and because he is the only mediator between God and the Father, and for me, it is the only religion that truly makes sense. First Timothy 2, 3 to 6 said, For it is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. And in Christianity, it is the only religion that has a perfect Lord God. You know, The decision to know and embrace the truth about God is very important 
for all as we can only achieve that in hearing and reading God's precious words, the Bible. Don't be fooled by Satan or fool yourself. Our eternity is either torment in hell or joy, peace, and abundance in heaven. It is your choice and will always be. This is why right thinking and knowledge of God is so critical. So as I conclude, there's only one true God and one true religion that leads people to that one true God, and that is Christianity. John 14, 6 said, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be born again to be led by the Holy Spirit of the one true God so that you can totally and completely obey the Bible that you may reach your final destination with Him in heaven. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless the family at TGF and all our brethren in Christ Jesus our Lord all over the world. And all the children of God say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. That was so nice. You're a family. Yes, I will worship His holy name.